person if you're watching online with our telestream. I'm Gabriel Shry. Thank you for tuning in. We're here in Chattanooga, Tennessee for this town hall and a great panel. Lots of experience on stage here with me today, both from Chattanooga Football Club and MLS Next Pro. So first I'd like to introduce you to this panel. We'll start down on the far end. This is Ali Curtis, MLS Next Pro Senior Vice President of Competition and Operations. Seated beside him, still kind of new, but beloved already, Elton Bird, Chattanooga Football Club's Chief Executive Officer. In the middle, the man who's the boss on the pitch. If you don't know him, Rod Underwood, Chattanooga FC's Head Coach and Sporting Director. And Davis Grizzard had a great outing in our, our first our announcement earlier today. He's our primary owner and board vice chairman. And MLS Next Pro's president, Charles Zelchik, seated right beside me here. So one more time, how about a round of applause for everybody up here? So we do have a ton of questions that are pre-submitted, but if you have a burning question, you just really want answered. Hayes can take your questions in the back, and we're gonna get started with those questions right now. We're gonna be taking some submissions through the stream still as well. I'm gonna start with Charles, who's closest to me here, and one of the questions that I thought was really, really good was, what makes Chattanooga such an attractive market for MLS Next Pro? Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh First of all, it's great to be here with all of you. We're a little blinded by the, uh, the lights, so we can't tell if you're smiling or laughing or crying or grimacing, which is good. But we're, you know, Ali and I are gonna lap this up because I think this will probably be the last time that this group cheers for us, you know? So, it, yeah. So uh, we had a great announcement earlier today, and I know most of you probably uh, were here or watched from home or from work or wherever you were, um, uh, but this group that's assembled, the fans, Chad Hooligans, um, and all of, all of those who've been a part of this club uh, for 15 years now, this is what it's all about for us. Um, and we've been uh, following the Chattanooga FC story for many years. And when Davis reached out to us uh, and started um, exploring whether there was a way for us to partner together it became very clear very quickly that uh, we were aligned in so many different ways uh, and that what you all are building, have built here and are building here is for the long term and that's what we're doing with MLS Next Pro. It's the league of opportunity for players and coaches and technical staff and business staff and we're all about creating opportunities for all of those who want to make it uh, to the next level or achieve their, um, their dreams. And so, you know, this is an exciting moment for us and we're really looking forward to uh, opening day. Elton, I, I loved your speech you gave during the press conference at two o'clock. And uh, I know I told you that already, but I, I can't tell you how great I thought that was. What has coming to Chattanooga meant to you and what's it been like for you running from things from the front office? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good question. Coming here really has changed my wife and I's life. It's been a... Uh, a different approach to our life. For those of you that know, I lived in New York for seven years. Somebody walked up to me in Chattanooga and said hello, and I thought they were talking to somebody else, because after seven years in New York, nobody ever spoke to me in public. Like, they either kicked me or they chased me or, but that doesn't, that doesn't make New York a bad place. But this place has really helped us understand Southern hospitality, uh, the kindness, the charitable nature of, of this city. And for us, this football club was an easy decision. Davis and I talked, the board and I talked, and, and when I saw the mission statement, when I saw the core values of the franchise, they aligned with mine personally. Uh, we've hired according to our core values, so we've expanded our staff. Uh, and then I got a chance to watch Rod do his thing on the pitch. Uh, I am smart enough to get out of the way and let him do what he does best um, and very proud of the job that he's done, his coaching staff, 
and the players. So for me, this was, uh, it, it has been really, I, I mentioned today, tra transformational. Um, and I think we have a lot of really exciting times ahead of us. Well, speaking of exciting times ahead, Rod, we've talked a little bit about the product on the field, you know, over the last couple of years. Is it surreal to you? Has it settled in yet? Or what do you think about all of this, going to MLS Next Pro and the product you're going to get to put on the pitch this coming season? Well, I don't know if it's set in or not, but it's just been fun, right? You know, being in this environment. Look, I, I say it over and over again. These guys know I have some experience in the early days of MLS, and this is the best MLS, the, the product. is the best league in America. It's the most powerful league in America. It has an international platform. And for Chattanooga to have that opportunity, I'm just excited to see what, what we can do with it. Davis, was this always the mission? How are you feeling about things? You know, you talked a little bit about that during the press conference, but take me behind closed doors as much as you can in a public forum. What was this process like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's exciting for me. I mean, when, we, when I first uh, became a fan, you know, that was just a fan. You know, I didn't think anything of it. I, we were in NPSL at the time, and that was all I really thought we were going to do. And um, obviously, when the uh, founders made the decision to go pro and they opened it up to the WeFunder, you know, that's when I, I bought a few shares then. And obviously, we've uh, bought a few more since then to get to the spot I'm at now. Um, but it's exciting to be able to, to take this next step. I mean, obviously you want to see the club grow and can prosper and, and MLS Next Pro is, is the next step for us and it is the, the best way for us to continue to grow and to continue to make steps forward. Charles, you're next. I, I'm wondering what the future of Next Pro looks like in your mind. What's your vision for the league? Yeah, it's, <clears throat> you know, we, we, we just finished season two. Um, and really proud of what we've accomplished so far over the last 24 months. But we keep reminding ourselves um, at the league office and in partnership with our clubs that we're just getting started. We've got an expansive vision for what this league is going to be in the future with, you know, we've got the, call it rough numbers, 30 MLS affiliated teams and 10 to 20 to 30 independent teams in addition to that over time. And when you think about what that could mean from a competition perspective, when we get to scale, call it 40 teams, do we consider splitting into a second division and a third division? Could you come up with some really creative competition formats between divisions, between Division Three MLS Next Pro, Division Two MLS Next Pro, First Division MLS? Um, the sky's the limit, you know, and there's a lot of white space. Um, but uh, for now, we're focused on launching uh, Season 3 in a big way. We've got Chattanooga coming in, Carolina Corps coming in, um, we've got other projects that we're working on around the country. Um, and so, you know, we're going to take it in, in increments, but all with, uh, uh, you know, an expansive view of what the future could hold. Fantastic. Well, I love to hear that as a fan. Ali, you're a former player, uh, an executive. How does that impact the way that you implement rules for the league? Um, you know, we're, we're a league of opportunity and... Um, you know, we're trying to do so many different things. We're trying to evolve the game. Um, we're trying to embrace innovation in a way that's authentic. Um, you know, the game, we always say the game's been around for 100 years, and the rules have been around for 100 years, and, you know, how can we be a part of the fabric of the game to evolve it to the modern game? And, you know, as I, I was fortunate enough to play the game, you know, at a young age and, and kind of go up the ranks, and so, you know, during those difficult moments, you, you can kind of draw on those experiences of you as a player. But, you know, I'm also a parent now, and I've got kids that, uh, that play soccer and grow up. And I, you know, so all those experiences you try to draw on from and try to improve the league every single day. And uh, I was grateful and fortunate to be part of uh, uh, MLS as a player. I'm fortunate to be part of it as an executive. And, you know, the sky's the limit, and we're really excited about, you know, what we've been able to accomplish thus far and, and looking forward. So uh, today's been excellent. Fantastic. I want to hear from Davis and Elton on this next question. This is kind of a two-person question. What will the fan experience be like coming to games this next season? Is it going to be more things added? Will it be changed? What will that look like when you walk in the gates on game day? I guess I'll take that one. Davis looked at me like... That's on you, dude. Um, <laughs> well, look, I, I, I think 
our intention is to make the fan experience um, really kind of exciting and something that you can't go and buy in other markets. It's, it's unique because this fan base and the heritage of this club has always been about what happens on the pitch and the passion behind it. So we want the fan experience to mirror the passion, the excitement, and the fun that our club's always been involved with. We have some new ideas. Those of you that know Peter Woolcock, he's, he's really like the mad scientist. Uh, he's the Wizard of Oz, he's got this idea and he's got that idea. And you sometimes have to say, Peter, there's this thing called the budget. You have to be within it. Um, but I think his, his, his best intention is next season to add and enhance what happens this year without getting crazy, without getting above our skis and making sure that what happens on the pitch is of primary importance. When you walk in the stadium next year, we hope that there will always be something positive, happy, fun, joyous. I never saw so many people happy when we did the dog rescue day. Like, people were, I, I thought about taking home a dog that day. I shouldn't say that, my wife's looking at me like, it's either me or the dog. <laughs> and so far for 23 years, she won. So, but it's, it's gonna be a fun experience and we're gonna build on what we've done so far. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to echo on, on the building and, and the growth. I think if you look at what the game day experience has been the last couple of years and what it was the, the back half of the season once we really hired a, a bigger staff and you know put more effort into it, I, I think people saw that the, the game day experience really grew. And especially if you were at the, uh, the playoff game, didn't end the way we wanted, but the atmosphere around that game and the excitement and you know the activities that people could do was, was really different. And we hope to just build on that and have game days look a lot more like that in the future. Awesome. Charles, I've got another one for you. So how do players make their way along the path from independent clubs to MLS? Compete, you know. Um, it, the way that we've set it up is, is very simple. You're, and, and this club is ahead of the curve in that there's already an academy that has been uh, in the community for a while with young players. I think we can hear them, some of them at least, in the background here. Um, and uh, over time, I wouldn't be surprised if that academy joined MLS Next at different age groups. And then we'll be competing not only in MLS Next Pro against Atlanta and Huntsville and all these other teams, but also at the U, you know, 13, 15, 17, 19 level. Um, and so those players are gonna be competing against top talents from around the country week in and week out. And then when you uh, show up to MLS Next Pro, you're playing against the Atlantas and the other teams from around the league. And you know, you're competing against them and you're also being scouted by them. So if you're a young player from Chattanooga or from this region and uh, you wanna make it you know, to the next level, the path is very clear. You get involved with the club, hopefully you're good enough to play for the Elite Academy. And then if you get the opportunity to play for the professional team, um, you know that you're gonna get looks and that's what it's all about. Fantastic. And then, Rod, for you alongside the pitch, does this change your vision for the way the roster is put together at all, being in this different league? And if so, how does it? I don't know if it changes because what we, our plan is always the same, to put the best players that we can find within the budget to make us as competitive as possible. And what we've always said is, right, it doesn't matter if the player is, the age is not important. For us, if it's a young player that we think can play, if it's a young player that we think just need to be in training. If it's a 22-year-old, we're just looking for the best player that we can find to help us be competitive every single year that fits our style, fits our vision, fits the way we want to play. Cool, I'm going back to Ali. This is cool. Tell me about pick your opponent for the playoffs. That's a really unusual format. And, and how does that impact the playoffs? What does it mean for the front offices of these teams? Pick your opponent was amazing. Um, it was a really, really cool uh, new playoff format. For those of that you don't know, we had a traditional format last year on the playoffs: higher seed host the um, uh, the other seed, and then and then so on and so forth, single game elimination. And this year, we had where the higher seed uh, not only got to host uh, the the playoff game, but they also got a, had the opportunity to pick. 
who they were going to play against. Um, it was a really cool, um, you know, playoff format and environment. Each team, you know, it created some really cool storylines. Um, created some really cool headlines. It not only from a competitive perspective gave the opportunity to, you know, host uh, the lower seated team, but it also gave you the competitive opportunity to pick who you were going to play. Um, and I think half the games um, were selected a non-traditional opponent. So it was a really engaging um, uh, playoff format that we were really excited about. It got a lot of engagement off the field, a um, lot of positive uh, feedback on the field. So uh, we're looking forward to next year, and this year uh, it went really well. That's super cool. I'm a big fan. Charles, staying with the, the business decision side of things, talk to me about Apple TV, your thoughts on the positive impact of that partnership. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're uh, in the first year, we're just finishing our first year of our new long-term partnership with Apple uh, and all of our matches in MLS, the majority of our matches in MLS Next Pro, all of our playoffs, all of our cup are on the platform, and it's global. So when you think about this club, um, and you think about your fan base and your ownership group that's from 50 different states and 30 different countries, now uh, you'll be able to watch uh, Chattanooga FC uh, week in and week out as part of what we're doing. Um, and it's only year one. And if there was a company that we would have wanted, you know, going into this process, if there was a company that we wanted to be partnered with, when you think about the top companies in the world, Apple's right up there as, as one of the most innovative companies that's ever uh, existed and now there are partners and we're just scratching the surface on what the opportunities are to push the sport forward um, and they could not be more excited about how things are going um, you know we were having a great year with uh, MLS Next Pro with launching new teams in both leagues and then uh, a certain um, player short player from uh, Argentina showed up and things kind of evolved from there um, and uh, has brought a lot of new eyeballs, not just from the U.S. and Canada and Mexico, which were kind of, you know, expected, but from all over the world. Um, and I think, you know, in partnership with Apple, it's going to be really exciting to see how we can evolve, how we can use new technologies in our broadcasts and just try new things. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. Fantastic. Well, I've certainly been paying attention, very into it. It looks great. This question is for the Blues, and I'd like to hear from all three of you, so maybe start with Mr. Bird and work our way down. What would your message be for the fans after today? What should they be expecting next from the front office and going onto the pitch next season? I guess I have to start with what's for tomorrow. Uh, none of our staff will be in before noon. Uh, I think we've had a record-setting day today in terms of ticket sales which is a good thing. Um, I think uh, certainly going forward, you know, Rod and I have a lot of work to do on football operations and how we can support getting the best players with the highest character. So that begins. Uh, our investment in the community is now going to be ramped up. Uh, what used to be the off season is no longer the off season. It is now a 12 month season for us. We're now in a business that doesn't stop. Our season is long, 10 months. The other two months and during the course of the year we will be investing more effort and energy into our women's team. We'll be investing more effort and energy into our men's team. Uh, we're going to invest more effort and energy into our academy which personally is award winning uh, with just under 700 kids. Uh, 1,250 parents, because you've got to count the parents with the kids. Uh, and then you've got uh, growth on that side, and then support what Crew Brock and Caitlin Newsom is doing in the foundation, their investment in the community. So it's a unification, and every single day, our front office staff will be knocking on your door or knocking on somebody's door to get more engagement and more involvement with this club. I tell people we're never going to run out of inventory. We have 20,000 seats to fill. Uh, and we want Chattanooga to support this club from five years old to 105 years old. We want you to have a place in our club. What was the question again? <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, for us, right? I mean, the, the thing that we try to do as a coaching staff, because the coaches are fantastic, right? Chris, Jordan, Juan, Omar, the guys have been fantastic. And then the players, right? I couldn't ask for more what the players have done over the last two years. Uh, but what's even more exciting about that is what we've done off the field and to build a culture of inclusiveness within our team and the connectivity within our team and the amount of work that the players do in the community, getting out to schools and all those things. And it's really, um, that's really important for what we want to provide this next year. Can we build on what we've done on the field, off the field? And we understand that the product is really important on the field and we want to do that. But what we want to do with the product on the field is make sure that not only do we win, but you enjoy watching us win, that it just drives you and you connect. You're connected to more than just the wins and losses. You're connected to the players and the wins and losses feel even better. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd echo what they say on, on most of it, but I, I think you're not gonna find three people up here that are more competitive and, and hate losing more. I mean, that's, that's a big thing. And you know, maybe Breezy's the one that, that hates losing more than anybody else, but <laughs> everybody else here, you know, that's, that's what we're looking to do. You know, we're gonna come into this league and, and try to win. And you know, I think uh, uh, one way to do that is through unity and having everyone be on the same page and be together. And um, I think it'll be really important to, to be a unified voice out there, whether it be the men's team or, or the women's team or the academy or, you know, even the foundation at that point and just have everyone, you know, come together and be on the same page, you know, as we said, for, for the city, because it's not really about, you know, the soccer that's on the field. I mean, that's one way we show it, but we just really want to do this for the city. Fantastic. I'm not sure if this is an Elton or a Davis answer. This is a question from Zachary. What will the club do to boost total wages and remain competitive in next pro? The wage question. Look, I think in all sports organizations, the business of sports is like your household, we have budgets. And we, to keep the, the integrity of the business, we've got to stay within budgets. Um, I'm, I'm confident, really confident. I think Davis is too, that Rod will take a look at the budget. He's not new to MLS, he's been involved. He laughs now because I, our budget process is happening now. And I always tell the people, may, tell our staff, ask for whatever you like. You won't get it, but ask for it, right? But we understand this is a business we run and that there are budgets. How Rod works the budget, He's a master at. We put a good team on the pitch this season. I, I'm convinced he'll do that next season. Yeah, I mean, I can echo that in, in a little bit, but obviously every step we've been along the way from NPSL to NISA and now to MLS Next Pro, we've hoped to grow revenue through that process. And as we grow revenue, we can now continue to grow expenses. And so expenses are part of the budget. And so, you know, I, I think with um, Apple, uh, other sponsors that MLS Next Pro has, that'll really give us a a good platform to continue to grow revenue and thus be able to put a better product on the field for us. This one is from Marcus with a K. Will we have instant replay next season? In stadium? I guess. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I tell Marcus, yes, we, we will have instant replay. That's one of the questions I asked today. I was talking to, we had a meeting with our partner at Finley and I was like, I want to make sure that if I get up and leave to get popcorn, I, there's some level of instant replay, and, and I think we will have instant replay. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank all of you so much for being here today and for hosting this town hall and panel and uh, everybody for being here. Let's hear it for how excited we are for MLS Next Pro. Thank you, everybody. Let's get back to the celebrations outside.